All right, what's up, guys? Matt here from Loon Outdoors, and today we are tying just a little bait fish pattern. Um, this one's kind of uh, just a generic version that I like to tie. It's kind of just a uh, kind of an olive over a creamy white type color. Um, and what I'm using today is uh, this is an Ahrex. Uh, it is a one of my favorite hooks. Um, I have two in this kind of curvature realm that I absolutely love. Uh, the one that we're tying with today is the Nordic Salt Traditional Shrimp number six. Um, I dig the shank, the way it kind of curves out of the way, uh, the bend of the hook, everything like that. The other one I really dig is the Firehole Sticks 718 for this. Um, anything that kind of starts out straight up here and has this cool bend to it uh, will work great for this pattern. Um, I'm not doing anything super special. I'm just going to be tying with some brown 70D. Uh, it's a flat wax nylon, and it's just a good basic thread. I'm out of my traditional Vivas 50D for the last few days, uh, secondary to uh, quarantining in place for months on end. I need to go about 550 more spools of that stuff. Um, anyway, so what I start out with here is... Uh, this is kind of a little bit of a root beer flash, uh, kind of colored uh, flashaboo or a crystal flash. Reason that I like this is um, it's nice and soft, and I don't technically want everything to be white. Fish are not all white um, on their belly. There is a lot of depth of color inside of a bait fish pattern. So right now out here in the West, we have a lot of baby bass smolt, I guess they would be, or yearlings or fingerlings, or uh, they're small bass. And one thing that I found is that large bass do not care that they are eating their possible offspring. So we've had some pretty fun days on the lake throwing just really smaller bait fish patterns on type seven sink lines over the points where the larger bass are staging uh, in June, uh, status post being like in full spawn mode. So what I'm gonna do is this is a, uh, this is some frar blend. This one happens to be in a brush and I kind of dig it for tying bait fish patterns. I'm not palmering this, but it's just a nice short piece of, uh, of frar blend that I can work with for smaller bait fish patterns without having to pull out the big hank. So I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit on there, measure up, and I'm gonna use the shorter ends as a stabilizing agent. Um, and what I mean by that is as I wrap this in, you'll see this starts to flare. So as I pull my Ferrar blend back over being a synthetic, it's gonna help provide some of that flare that you would get with something like a, like a yak hair or something like that. So, Next up, I just like to use a little bit of some Marabou. This is a uh, Hairline's Ultra Premium Selectist, most bestest Marabou. Um, I don't think that's actually its name, but it's it's the real good stuff. And I dig that in there just because it provides some movement. So that's going to be the basis for our, our body here. You can see there's going to be some creamy undertones uh, from that root beer flash kind of poking through. And if you're not 100% beautiful right here, don't stress out, it's not a big deal. Um, next up, I'm gonna bring in just a little bit of some craft fur. This is like tan or sand. Um, it's just kind of a nice creamy color and I'm not bringing in a ton of it. What I'm doing is, is literally just this little wisp and I'm gonna use a, uh, an under fur comb here just to make sure I get out all of the under fur um, because like deer hair craft fur does come with under fur built in there this is going to help kind of create a beautiful little transition line for your bait fish pattern and we'll just kind of spread that over the top of the white marabou and the beautiful thing with bass is they're just so in particular they're just like they see something moving and pulsating coming through the water, they're gonna eat it. Um, 
So this is a cool material. It's a Senyo's Predator Wrap. This one happens to be kind of a light greeny olive color. Um, I use this a lot for uh, thin-bodied caddis patterns as well. Um, it does have a tremendously good amount of play, though, for uh, building really cool bait fish just because of the, the nature of it and the fact that it's pre-speckled and has UV reactive qualities behind it. It's fast become one of my favorite little materials to, to wing little like bait fish patterns like this with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a hearty little wrap here. And that kind of becomes our top overwing. And from here, once I have it, I'm going to use a longer pair of scissors. And I just do a little bit of a trim there. And this is like a five inch razor scissor. Um, if I get all the, the butt ends in there. And, th and that's going to just kind of simulate just that baby bass look again. <clears throat> so I'm going to pull out, this is, uh, this is just a little bit of uh, Senyo's laser hair. This is the 4.0 version. This one happens to be a medium olive color. Um, and again, this is a nice, real light, wispy material that I feel like I can trim up and make look really cool. And as I get in here, I'm just going to go ahead and thin that out. I'm going to add a little bit more of our marabou collar down here. And I don't, I don't tie this with any weight. Um, I don't want weight on this fly uh, for me personally. Once I have it measured again, I'm gonna use the back ends of the marabou as a stabilizer and to help spread that out so I can get a little bit more bulk in the head. So it'll be a little bit of a two-stage process. So you can see by I'm pushing with my thumb right here, what I'm doing is I'm rotating that material out and about so it becomes more kind of full over the top of everything. And I'm just gonna go ahead with my shorter scissors and kind of come in and pre-taper this just because I've been tying a bunch of these. I know right where I want it to fall. And we'll go ahead and start whip finishing for our head here. Now I leave the head pretty open. Um, I don't do a lot with it, but you can see you get this cool little streamer effect. Um, and the reason I like it weightless is because I am fishing it on a sink line. You can add weights into here if you wanted to. You can make it right hook point up. You can add weed guards, um, which you would do at the, the head of the fly right now. There's really sky's the limit to this pattern. I'm just fishing it on a sink line or an intermediate line over the top of weed beds. So for us out west, a lot of our bass are spotted bass. They kind of have a red eye. Um, and when I'm talking about out west, I'm speaking really in my backyard, which is Northern California. We have some of the best spotted bass fisheries in the country. Um, sorry for you Midwest boys and stuff that think you do, but last time I checked, we still have the world record. Um, so I'm just going to use a red eye. It also simulates uh, a lot of bait fish get their eyes, their eyes turn red when they get super flustered. Oops, that's not the right color. It's going to use a little bit of a UV brown over the top here, um, just to build a little bit of a darker head up front which, you know, you don't have to do this, but I, I like kind of pimping out the front of it just a bit. So once I have my initial cure in there, um, I'm going to clean up this little straggler. A few little wisps of marabou that have snuck in there. Um, and I'm going to fill this up again with some flow. Now you can see I'm, I'm, prepping, the, I'm prepping the marabou fibers just to stand out a little bit more. You can see I'm doing a quick layup with resin and then a kind of what I like to call a base cure. 
Then once I get there, I'll settle in for a longer, more uh, substantial cure period. And at this point, what I'll do is I'll just bring the flow in and, and do the whole head system all the way around. And I'm just going to work that. It's going to soak back into the material a little bit. I don't mind that at all. I actually enjoy that because as this fly collapses, it's going to help maintain that fish profile quite a bit more than if you did not do that. So after you feel you have a nice full cure on there, go ahead and go out and fish this. Enjoy it. You could probably strip it uh, places where there's like small perch and there's brown trout that are going to be, you know, predatory towards, uh, you know, little rainbows or whatever else is swimming in the ocean or they're not in the ocean, but their uh, their waterway. You can tie tons of different colors with this has a ton of cool material or a ton of cool flash that's inside the fly. It's not going to be too outwardly flashy, um, but hope you guys enjoyed this. Go ahead and check it out and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.